What's going on world? Just want to do a uh, quick little genetic video for you. I'm here at the uh, Repticon Chantilly Dulles Pet Expo. This is one of the best expos that I go to every year uh, because one, because it's not just for reptiles, but it's also for dogs and cats. But two, because it's a smaller show, which is good because it gives you more time to actually interact with the people who are walking around and answer questions and uh, share information. But three, because the people that come usually come to buy, which is always a good thing when you're at a reptile show. Um, so like I said, I just wanted to do a quick little video for you guys, um, showing you some of the stuff that I brought with me today and uh, give you a little breakdown on some genetics. I've done other v videos on genetics for you guys as far as the different types of morphs and genes, um, but it never hurts to go over it again. Some of you might not have seen some of my earlier videos and give you all a better understanding of some of the genetics you deal with the bearded dragon. So I'm here with someone now, and they're here with us at the uh, the Dulles Pet Expo. And the first thing that she noticed was that these two dragons look a lot different than the other dragons that I have here at the show. And the reason being because these two dragons have a gene that's uh, fairly new, and it's called the Dunner gene. So basically, what the Dunner gene is is it allows the dragons to have a very sporadic pattern and it also causes exaggerated spike clusters. See how the clusters on them, like the spikes look seem like long and just like together, like really, you know, dinosaurs, prehistoric even. Um, a lot of times it'll offer this blue barring that you see on the side. Um, but this guy, he is a hypo genetic strike Dunner Citrus. So breaking all those genetics down for you, the hypo would refer to hypomelanism, which is a lack of dark pigmentation, meaning he's gonna have a pastelish color. And also another indicator, if you look really closely at his nails, he has all white nails. So if you look at this one right here, just to show you a comparison, this one right here, you can see it from here, she has black nails. And then again, like I said, this guy right here, he has all white nails. So also, with the Dunner, if you look on his belly, you can see how his scales are growing in different directions. Mm -hmm. So they look like, like little clusters at the bottom of him, right? And then like I said, he's a genetic stripe. So that straight stripe going down his back, that's the genetic stripe gene. And then the citrus will refer to his color. So he's a bright yellow. So the similarities between these two is they're both Dunners. Right. So what it does, like I said, it, it just gives them that, that sporadic patterning. Mm -hmm. Like the pattern's just all over the place. And it sometimes even goes down to the tail. That exaggerated spike clustering. And the color phase is different. So this one is from a red line. And then this one is from our citrus line. Yep, so that's that's just a line breed morph. It's not so much a genetic as it is like from selective breeding. So comparing those two, and I'm only housing these two together for the purpose of this video because they're male and female, which you don't really want to do. Um, but like I said, the similarities is they're both dunners, meaning they're gonna have that prolific pattern, that sporadic patterning. And like I said, this one's a genetic stripe dunner, this one's a normal dunner. So what it did is the genetic stripe, it washed out the pattern in the tail. Right. See how that one still has this, you know, sporadic patterning going all the way down to the tail. And as you can see, there's a big difference in color. I hope that uh, helps some of you guys get a basic understanding of genetics. I hope that helps you out. I appreciate you guys stopping by my booth. Thank you. All right, so let's see, what other genetics could we talk about while we're sitting here at the table? Here's a very, very common one for a lot of new bearded dragon keepers or people who are just getting into bearded dragons, and that is leatherback versus normal scale, okay? So here I have two reds. This is a red leatherback translucent male, okay? And here I have a red normal scale female. Now, some people might call these orange, but they're from red lineage, and that's really what I'm talking about. So, what is the primary difference between a leatherback 
and a normal scale. So the primary difference between a leatherback and a normal scale is that a leatherback, like this guy right here, has reduced scalation. Now this is not to be confused with a silk back. Your silk backs have no scales at all, okay? Well, they have they have a few scales here and there on their tails and whatnot, but for the most part, they have no scales. Uh, a leatherback has reduced scalation, which means reduced spikes, as you can see here. Reduced scalation on the back. They're a lot smoother to the touch. They're very easy to identify, you know, visually. Um, now, with the normal scale, like this girl right here. Oh, excuse me. Now, with the normal scale, these are basically the original bearded dragons in the sense that they have the rough, bumpy texture, regular spikes that go pretty much down the entire length of the body. Lots of spikes on the beard. And like I said, you can pretty much identify these guys from the touch. Here's another example of a leatherback. Okay? Completely different color morph, which isn't really a genetic trait, but more so a selective line bred trait. Okay? Um, but this is another leatherback. She has a few more spikes than the leatherback male I was just showing you, but as you can see, they're still very small. And the scalation is a lot smoother than this normal scale female here. <laughs> but this is a good example because she isn't the smoothest leatherback. Now she's also had zero, had hypo and had trans, which affects her color as well. The head zero and the head hypo definitely dull out her color a lot. But we'll get into recessive genes in another video. And I also have videos posted already on recessive genetics. Okay. But yeah, those are two morphs right there for you. Leatherback and normal scale. And leatherback, just to give you a little bit more on the leatherback, like this girl here and this guy here, the leatherback gene is a dominant gene or co-dominant gene in the sense that when you breed one leatherback to a non-leatherback, 50% of your offspring roughly will be leatherback. Now, not to confuse you, but there's also something called recessive leatherbacks. But I'll go into that in another video. Um, like I said, right now, I just want to keep it basic for you guys. Just a quick little video on genetics. Let's see what else we can talk about. Hmm. Here we go. This is a leatherback zero. Okay. Now. The leatherback, again, would be the reduced scalation, making it smoother. All right, it almost reminds me of like uh, denim. But whatever the case, the zero refers to zero pattern and zero color. So that's why she has this gray look. Hypo zeros can be a bright white. Zeros are often what people are referring to when they ask, do you have white dragons or is that a white dragon? Lots of people call zeros albino dragons. Okay, you gotta give me a second, baby. But yes, this is a leatherback zero. All right. And over here, I have a leatherback translucent. Possible head zero and whip blit and hypo. Okay, and it's going through shed. But again, you can see that reduced scalation. And I just turned the lights on for these guys, so they're warming up. They don't really want to be bothered at this moment. As you can see. And here are some normal scales. Again, you can see visually the bumpy rough texture, right? This is a hypo normal scale. And I talked about hypo a little earlier in the video, but hypo again refers to hypo melanism, gives them a more pastelish color in comparison to her siblings here who are non-hypo, right? You see how much darker the non-hypo siblings are. So the hypo helps to lighten up the color and it also will give the dragons all white nails. Can you see that, all white nails? All right, so like I said, that's just a quick video for you guys. 
a little something while I'm at the show. Like I said, I hope that that uh helped you guys have a little better understanding of some of the dragons you might see at a show or some of the morphs that you might deal with. And in the meantime and in between time, guys, peace, love, begonas. I'm out.